So I quite often got people asking me, you know, what do your minerals look like when you get them home and you clean them up? Well, today a little surprise, I'm going to do a bit of that. Um, Parker Mine uh, with the Spinel in Quebec, Comet Mine in Quebec, and uh, a bit of the course from our mystery location. All three of these I'm dumping in the acid bath here, hydrochloric acid, and um, I'll just show you, uh, just some, always comes up with some really exciting results. Guys, I'm standing pretty well dead center in the middle of my local town here. Uh, just moved to Milberton not so long ago. Real cool place. 30% uh, of the uh, town's first language is supposedly German. I guess it's the largest old order Amish community in Canada. Uh, anyway, reason I'm telling you this, local hardware store. Uh, here's where I'm going to buy some uh, materials. Mm. As I say, often a lot of horses downtown with the feed mill. Guelph, one hour that way. Here's my assistant, my son Joshua. You notice he's getting all goggled up. He's wearing the rubber gloves. We're going to do the hydrochloric acid thing. Okay, here we go. Putting the crystals in. That's been toothbrush washed. Just pouring the hydrochloric acid over the crystals. I think we're going to probably end up turning it upside down and soaking it. Let's soak for 15 minutes. 15 minutes, yeah? Yeah, 15 minutes and then flush all parts thoroughly and brush. Okay. So here we are, we've got about 50% water with this mix. Um, I've got to basically cover over a couple of different crystals that I've got. So I've also got some spinel here from the Parker mine and it's uh, kind of encased in calcite. I'm going to drop that in with this hydrochloric acid too just as an experiment, see how that works. See if it frees up the spinel a bit. Right off the bat I see the calcite's bubbling, there's bubbles all around that. Obviously it's dissolving it real fast. Um, I'm going to try this one as well. I've got a bit of calcite around that spinel so I'm going to drop it in. Check this out after a wash in the hydrochloric acid. That's where it's washed. That's where it's not. Seems to have got most of the surface stain off, a few scabs hanging off on some of the other stuff. There's a star, phosphorite and, and uh, spinel. You see the phosphorite's raised up the green crystals. Yeah. So you can sort of flat orthorhombic shapes. And there's your black <laughs> spinel. Beautiful, that was the Parker mine. Um, and of course, there's some of the other stuff that's come out of the acid bath. Here's a surprise from the comet mine. Uh, the calcite's been dissolved. The appetite holds its own still, and there's your squarish diopside. That's something, eh? Wow! So I've showed the, um, the Parker mine um, in the Spinel video. Uh, the Comet mine is yet to come in a video. Uh, but the quartz crystals, mystery location somewhere in Ontario. So uh, yesterday I'm sitting there in my living room, and uh, what comes out of my wife's cell phone but this text message from Jeff. And with it is this incredible plate, quartz plate that he's found. Needless to say, didn't waste any time. Uh, just met up with Jeff at this undisclosed location and what a place for quartz. Unbelievable stuff. He spent the night up here. So uh, anything to say, Jeff, about your finds? Like that's just a common thing. It's everywhere, right? You can see the quartz. Um, unusual shapes some of them. Uh, we're pretty optimistic as to what, what we're going to find here. Here's a, a small example of the bigger picture within this rock. I'm not sure really, maybe a bit of a limestone or something, partly metamorphosed. But you're seeing pockets, and the bigger the pocket, the bigger the crystals. That's a very small pocket, so little tiny crystals. Here we go. Here's my first really beautiful, unbroken, untouched crystal plate was facing into the wall. Obviously there's a cavity that this is part of lining, so I'm going to probe around and see if I can expose the cavity. You can just tell by the looseness of the rock, I've been using my crowbar up against this, but I can tell there's a crystal face here. Let's see what I open up. You'll be the first. Oh, oh yeah, look at that. Lovely untouched nubs of crystal. Um, Jeff's found bigger ones yesterday for sure, but hey, Nothing beats actually finding them for yourself. Show me that one, Jeff. When you just found that one, eh? So 
So I'm opening up this cavity and there's a lovely little free floater, doubly terminated. Both ends have a pyramid on them. That's how you know it's free floating. It wasn't growing from a wall. Likely to find a few more of these in a minute. I've been working at the edge of the pocket here for quite some time and it's all loose. There it comes, loose. What have I got? What have I got? Mm. Smaller. Mm. That's nice. Some very lustrous faces there. I think I'm in the wrong spot again. Clean that up with a hose, it'll be beautiful. So in total we're looking at an exposure length of about 80 feet. Um, it's basically a hump in the forest. Um, you can see, looking at this, you can see this particular rock has been dissolved and it's already pocked. So that would probably have been the original rock uh, prior to the uh, quartz coming up from deeper down and this rock being dissolved, leaving the cavities. Uh, possibly something like a dollar stone, or actually I'm looking at it, this is actually a crystal that's been dissolved. It's almost squarish. Hmm, fascinating. And of course the cast-offs of people, um, things they just chuck aside, are in their own right some pretty significant crystal specimens for collectors who are starved uh, for minerals in southern Ontario. This is definitely the prize. Lovely big plate with some beautiful undamaged crystals. They're not the biggest crystals that I've got, but uh, there's definitely a lot of them. So, I mean, somebody tipped off Jeff on the condition that we didn't uh, share location, which obviously we cannot do and will not do. And we do appreciate the tip because it's a phenomenal mineral collecting site. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, so there's a lot of... Um, it's definitely limestone that's been hardened up with uh, metamorphic action, obviously, because of the deposition of the quartz. There's been stuff going on, solution of the rock itself to make the pockets. Um, large crevices everywhere. Looks like people have done some significant digging uh, in the past, um, looking for these fissures. Not everywhere has them in this particular area, but the hump that we're on um, the fissures are more on the other side. Uh, you know, I don't doubt that a bit more work in this area will reveal some pretty amazing stuff, but when you don't see the quartz crystals and the, the actual quartz massive in a massive form in the area where the digging's taken place, you pretty well know it's a bust and not to waste your time there. So lower down the hill you're finding much bigger crystals, but they're much milkier. They seem to be a lot clearer further up the hill, so this is a seam. I guess each seam has different characteristics. You would not believe the amount of crystals I carried back in my bucket. Exhausting. Great sight, Jeff. Thanks for uh, thanks for the uh, text message yesterday with the picture. Thank you. We're on fire. We did some kind Plum of Hollow Road. Oh, oh. Is this the Ottawa Valley or something? Time here, and that's all the food we bought. Almost forgot to bring food. What's, what are you seeing, Jeff? No. So, yeah, we're renting this little cottage. Really not a bad place. 35 bucks. And it's pretty near our mineral sites. That